Are you passionate about your development and doing the right thing? We have with us this morning a young man who is passionately curious about exploring new adventures. A motivational speaker, board member of the Procurement Board of Trinidad and Tobago, and co-chair of the TNT Youth Advisory Group. He is perhaps the youngest person to serve in our parliament as a senator. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I invite Mr. Nikolai Jean Paul Edwards to tell us his story. Mr. Dion Abdul, Chair, Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute, the Honorable Anthony Garcia, Minister of Education, Your Excellency Carla Hogan Rufels, High Commissioner for Canada to Trinidad and Tobago, other heads of missions and members of the Diplomatic Corps, representatives of international organizations and agencies in Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Justice Melvin Baird, retired Justice, Chairman of the Integrity Commission of Trinidad and Tobago, Mrs. Rafina Ali Budusing, President, National Council of Parent Teacher Associations. Mr. Martin Farrell, Vice Chair, TTTI, and Chairman of Integrity Club Steering Committee. Members of the Integrity Club Steering Committee, principals, teachers, students, other specially invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. A warm and pleasant good morning. So what I will do is set a timer on myself to make sure that I am within the time limit uh, given to me. But I want to ask one quick question. So I have two speeches that I could possibly give. One, a real speech, and the second one, the realest real speech. Which one do you want? The realest real. All right. So you'll get the realest real. Now, I want to start off asking the question, why do we do what we do when we do it? Something motivates us to do what we do every single day. Something motivates us to wake up in the morning, put on a uniform or work clothes, and go out of the house to do something. It may mean uh, planting the seeds for the future. It may be that we are going out there to ensure that we have employment to take care of our family, to have some extra money to enjoy ourselves on the weekend. Uh, but the fact is, we do what we do when we do it because something drives that. In Trinidad and Tobago, we complain about the status of uh, our politicians, the persons we come in contact, we complain about the traffic, we complain about so many things. And they are all things worthy of complaining about, but they are equally worthy of putting action to the things that we see happening around us. If we want to fix Trinidad and Tobago, we all have a responsibility and we all have the capability to act. And through this integrity club, or these integrity clubs, we have the power and the potential to change the national landscape of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. We recently recognized Republic Day, and we have come far since independence and attaining Republican status. But the truth of the matter is that in Trinidad and Tobago, we have much further to go. And there are many of the school who are of the school of thought that where we are presently, we should have been much further at this point. But we can't change the past. What we can do is change the direction our future is headed to. And you may sit in the audience, especially you, the young ambassadors, and think to yourselves, well, I young. The most I could probably do is try to change something in school. But once you start to limit yourself like that, you're doing a disservice to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago because you have within you the potential to do great things. In this very room, we may have a future prime minister or president or someone holding such high esteem that they can change the world, but it starts with putting action to thought. And I must commend you for taking up this initiative and agreeing to be a part of the Integrity Clubs. This is you planting a seed in our nation's future. 
Now, integrity is something that we battle with every single day. Yesterday I was having lunch and I got orange juice, uh, um, fruit punch. So I drank that already and at the end of my meal I wanted something more to drink. So, but then I realized when I asked the, uh, the waitress, I was like, could I have something to drink? And she was like, you had something before. And I realized that you could only get one drink with your meal. And I sat there and I was like, yes. And she was like, well, you only allowed one. And in my mind, at that moment, I could have said no and gotten that next drink. But it didn't feel right with me. A small lie could turn into a big lie. And it's the simple things that you do every single day when you come in contact with people that makes a difference. It's a simple thing as in school. You saw the pen there and you realize, well, this is a nice pen. And you pick up the pen, but you're not sure of the ripple effect that that may have. Because that may be the only pen that that other child brought to school to write an exam. And then he or she is going into that exam in panic mode and ends up failing that exam. Why? Because you pick up the child pen. You have to think about the consequences that goes along with your actions. Now, I have in my mind tons of reasons to think that I could just pack up and leave this country. Because I've had experiences in Trinidad and Tobago that many persons as well are all too familiar with when we look at the current landscape. But at the end of the day, I know that I owe my country an insurmountable debt that I have to repay. And one of the things that really pushed me on the edge was back in 2015 when my father escaped from remand prison in Port of Spain, from uh, the Royal Jail in Port of Spain. He was on remand yet. And for those of you who don't know what remand is, it's when you've been arrested by police and you are awaiting your trial or you're awaiting bail. And he was on remand for six years at that point, waiting for his court date to come up. Because every time he went to court, it was put off, his case, for six years. And truth be told, it was only earlier this year that I got a phone call from a police uh, station saying that my father's case was now coming up in the court and that they wanted me to more or less produce a death certificate and what have you. It would have been nine years since he was arrested. And what he did back in 2015 is not something that I would encourage anyone to do. He decided to take matters into his own hand. And as such, he escaped from prison. And we all know what happened at the end of that. Well, for him, they found his body two days later, bullet riddled. And I remember going up on social media and reading all the comments because people had the will to say, you know, Trinidad and Tobago, there's not a real place. So everybody's have something to say. And I read hundreds upon hundreds of comments saying that it was good for my father and he deserved to die the way he died and that we, his family members, would end up in the same position. And in that moment, I could have decided to take a particular road in life. Revenge, probably. I could have decided that, you know what? Working hard don't make sense because we're all going to end up like dead dogs in the drain. But that's something I do not believe whatsoever. I do believe that hard work pays off. And as a consequence, I decided that I wanted to start working to help reform the criminal justice system in this country. A big feat for a young man such as myself. But I still found the need to invest so heavily in the persons around me to get that ripple effect going. And in that very same year, I contested the position of Vice Chairperson, Policy Advocacy and Projects of the Commonwealth Youth Council, and I was successful. I flew to Malta, and Malta is more than just a drink, it's actually a country. Um, and that was the first time that I went to Malta, and I successfully was able to get that title, representing 1.2 billion young people across the world. This young man from South Trinidad had the potential to do that. There is nothing stopping any one of you in this room from achieving your truest and fullest potential. From there, from there, um, fast forwarding through all the work that I've been able to do 
In 2017, last year, January was appointed as the youngest ever independent senator in the history of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And the first piece of legislation that I had the pleasure of debating had to do with the Marriages Acts. So essentially, what I was doing was helping to end child marriages in Trinidad and Tobago. Because I believe firmly that it is society's responsibility to protect our children. And to know that I was on the right side of history is something that I will forever cherish. But then later in that year, last year, I was able to debate two pieces of legislation, one that had to do with bail, um, and one that had to do something with the uh, pre-trial process as well. There I was, standing in the Parliament of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, doing exactly what I had set out to do less than two years after I decided to help reform the criminal justice system in our country. And it was because I held fast to my beliefs, to my morals, and to my values. And it was quickly being recognized by the national landscape, to the point where earlier this year, I was appointed as the youngest member of the first ever procurement board. And when we talk about integrity, when we talk about even on the other side of that corruption, we tend to think about politicians and persons in high office spending our money at their free will. And I have the opportunity to sit on one of the most significant boards in the country that oversees how money is spent in this country and has the opportunity to look at every single contract once public money is involved. I'm just 26 years. It all comes as a result of hard work and dedication and knowing that you have to walk the straight and narrow no matter what storm may come your way. And one of the things, finally, that I wanted to leave as a mark on Trinidad and Tobago was creating a space for young people to ensure that they are heard. Because I believe firmly that young people, as a collective, it's a grouping that is underutilized and undervalued in our country. We have to pay more attention to the needs of the young people and at the same time listen to the solutions that they are presenting because they are the ones who are going to, in the future, lead our institutions. So by planting the seeds now, you will be assured of a tree bearing good fruit in the future. And so I created the Trinidad and Tobago Youth Convention back in 2016. And just a couple of days ago, on Wednesday, I was able to host the third annual National Trinidad and Tobago Youth Convention at the Sudden Academy for the Performing Arts. I had the pleasure of the Canadian High Commissioner there to give remarks, uh, the Minister of Sport and Youth Affairs, and this has really grown into a space. And I'm just doing that for you all, because when I was your age, I didn't have mentors. I didn't have people there guiding me along the way. I didn't even have anyone to tell me how to start university. And so I missed the first year of an opportunity because I was the first person in my family to go to university. The landscape right now, with all its challenges, is ripe for opportunity. You have to get up, get out, and grab a hold of the opportunities. And by you signing up to be a part of this Integrity Club, you are already grasping the opportunities that come your way. So don't be dumb, don't be one of those who throws your hands up in the air and think, well, oh God, this country going down. You help lift it up. Because the thing is, once each and every one of us carries the weight of the country on our back, we will be able to lift it up. So with that being said, I thank you for the opportunity, the Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute, once again, for allowing me into your space to help to influence the minds of the young people of this country knowing fully well that together, once we aspire, together we will achieve. I thank you very much.